Hey everyone, I wanted to share um, something that we um, purchased to use as part of our language arts curriculum for fifth grade um, for my next year, when my daughter will be in fifth grade. Um, but I wanna test it out um, before next year. So we're gonna do one um, lesson in this book now in fourth grade and um, then fingers crossed we like it and we'll go ahead and use it in fifth grade. But I thought I would kind of tell you a little bit about the program and take you along through the one lesson that we're gonna do so that you can kind of see um, how it works. All right, so we, um, I just wanted a, a stronger kind of creative writing program for next year. We have both essentials in writing and lightning literature that we're using this year and both of them have writing components to them. Um, lightning literature, we like it for the literature components and we will keep using it for that. But there's not a lot of um, guidance for the writing portion. Um, and then essentials in writing is great as well, but you don't really get to the writing portion until the second, you know, third of the year. And it's a lot more formal writing than this is. And my kids um, love to make up stories and I just really wanted to encourage that and really wanted more, um, kind of guidance for them along the way as they're writing. So this is what we purchased. We went ahead with book E. Um, let's see back here, it shows, sorry, my lights are reflecting there, but um, we could have gone, you could go with book D or book E depending on um, where your child is. But since we were mostly looking at this for next year, um, it seemed like book E would be um, a good place for us to start. This is a little pricey of a program. I wanna say it was about $100-ish, give or take a few. Um, you can see my lamp. Um, and also, I'm a little nervous because this is not an open and go curriculum and I tend to do better with open and go things. There's a lot of prep work in this um, and a lot of just kind of pre-reading that you need to do as the instructor, so I'm a little nervous about that, but I think it's going to be best for my kids, so that's why I wanna give it a go, because it's really about them, not me. Um, so anyway, we, you get the teacher's guide here. You can get this time saver pack to go with it, which just has a bunch of the stuff that they have asked you to copy on a colored paper, already on the colored paper. And then this is the activity pack that goes with it, and I'll open these up here in a couple minutes, but. I thought I would show you the teacher's guide first. There's a lot of information here, I'm not gonna lie. It can seem a little bit overwhelming. Um, but anyway, they give several different um, suggestions for schedules if you wanna do um, a three week schedule or a two week schedule or whatever. There's different possible layouts and they explain each one and why it may or may, or may not work for you. There are a lot of supplies, and then they also recommend making like a writing center. Um, you can use a cart or you could do something more um, portable, which is probably what we're gonna do. Most of the stuff they have you put in it is stuff you already probably have at home anyway. You just kind of have it in one place for ease of use. So they go through the supplies. So many of these are optional supplies. And then let's see. Then it also tells you if there's supplies that are specific to a lesson. Um, nothing seemed kind of too crazy. And some of them we're not even gonna probably do. Like this one has you have some fun foam and a stamp pad and some glue. And when I looked at the lesson, they cut out a shape and use put it in the um, ink and stamp it on to like decorate their cover, I think. And we're not gonna do that, so. Um, I mean, it's fun, I guess, if she really wants to, she could, but I don't, I think she'd rather um, design her cover in another way. So anyway, this just tells you the specific lessons, um, what you are going to need. And a lot of help here for the teacher. And then it goes in and explains. So in each lesson, there are eight activity sets. And most of these are like, on separate days. I think one of them gets broken down into two days, if I remember correctly. So it just explains what those are, and then it goes through each one here. So activity set one has the fold and go grammar, 
and also the reading log. So it just explains that activity set, the pre-writing activity. It explains kind of what they are in general. It goes through all of them. And then we get to the first lesson. It gives you an overview of the lesson. The first one we're going to do is writing a fable. That's the one we're gonna go ahead and do this year. Um, so it tells you all the materials you're gonna need for that lesson. And then it gets into the specific activities. So that's kind of how the book works. And let me show you kind of what's in. All right, these. so we have the activity pack here. And this side here is for the fold and go grammar pack, which we will put together and show you when we get it put together. But that's what the this side is for. And then these are the worksheets that go with each of the lessons. You can kind of see there's different activities there. So that's what those are. I do believe you can buy this program digitally and it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but I was just kind of trying to be real about <laughs> how lazy I am. And if I can have it all printed out on the correct colors for me already, um, that's going to be a huge thing to help me complete doing this. So anyway, this is the time saver pack. And... I'm not quite sure how this is going to be used yet. Oh, I think maybe these are different games maybe that go with some of the lessons. So that's that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start to prepare our little writing center and kind of get our all our lessons ready to go. Okay, so we did um, day one. We did the Fold and Go sentences activity. And I put this together ahead of time. And then we just worked through each of the six pages. And then they are supposedly they reference this throughout like the rest of this unit and future units. So this one was about subjects and predicates, um, simple subject, complete subject. Um, compound subject, simple predicate, complete predicate, and compound predicate. So, um, we did find a couple of mistakes in the answer key though, so that was a little um, frustrating. I don't know if you can see in the maze how it has you like go through solid lines, but that seemed off and then um, these were not correct based on what they taught. So, but anyway, so far, um, with that exception, we are liking this so far. So that was our first anyway. activity. Um, so <clears throat> I thought the grammar part of this was helpful. I would not use, I don't think you could use this. Well, I wouldn't use this as a standalone uh, grammar program, but I felt like this was really good and really helpful and was kind of good review and a good way to help kind of cement some of this stuff in. All right, so we played this game to see who could build their fable first or the parts of their fable. So we roll a die and if you land, if you get a six then you get to add this part. So this takes you through all the parts of a fable. We have the characters, the character traits, the beginning, the middle, the end, and the moral. Five, I get the end of the fable. You only got the middle and the end. The middle and the end. The beginning. I'm missing parts to my fable. Okay, your turn. Six is, or is this a nine? That's a six. Okay, six. So what part did you get? The moral. Oh, you got the moral. All right, my turn. Three. I get the beginning of the fable. Who do you think is going to finish their fable first? Me. All right, your turn. Eight. Oh, we don't have eight, so just roll again. Four. I already got Okay, so now it's my turn. I need a regular die. Four. All right, I already have it, so it's your turn. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. <laughs> Two. I get the character traits. No, actually, I think you're going to win. All right, your All turn. right, so we are on to day three. Um, I think I forgot to get a clip yesterday in our activity, activity set two. 
um, where we did, we played the pre-writing activity or game, which I did show you that. But then from there, we moved on to model and teach. Um, and we kind of went through and together, uh, we did it on a dry erase board, um, went through kind of the little suggested um, dialogue here that they had and we um, kind of wrote our own or started to write our own little fable. Um, I wrote and she kind of um, dictated what she wanted me to uh, put down. Um, but I forgot to get a clip of that before we erased it. So we did that, but we are now on day three. We are on to activity set three, which is choose a voice. This is activity set three is always a skill builder, something, um, let me see what it says about, um, yeah, the purpose of the skill builder, which is always activity set three, is to learn and apply specific new writing skills or develop a set of tools that help with writing. So in this particular instance, um, we're focusing on choosing a voice uh, for our character or characters in our fable. So, um, sorry, my hand keeps going in front of the camera. So we have this little activity that we're going to do. Here are a bunch of, um, let me see where it shows the thing here. So yeah, so we have a bunch of the different little word boxes which have words that could describe our characters and then we have a bunch of different characters. And so they kind of walk you through an activity of picking a, a couple words and a character and um, talking through some dialogue that might match, um, acting out some of the dialogue and things like that. So we'll do that. And then also in activity set three is a journal writing practice. And so for this, they give you one of these, um, and they look different, I think, for every um, unit based on what it is. But this one um, is, again, based on the character traits. So there's this little journal page that she will do, and then that's it for today. All right, so learning to choose the right voice is an important writing skill. And we can develop that voice by giving each character in our stories a unique personality trait or a unique way of thinking or acting. So in a fable, voice is especially important because each character portrays either what? Good or bad traits usually, right? And they those traits are what helps teach the moral. Okay, so you are gonna choose one animal from the picture as a possible character in a fable. So go ahead and pick mm. what character do you wanna pick? You don't have to use this for your fable, but we're gonna use it for the activity. I think the lion. The lion, okay. So now we're gonna look at the word boxes and we're gonna to try to pick two that are gonna to describe the traits of this lion in our fable. Like in this one I read, where this wolf got bones stuck in his throat. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it was like a stork or something, and it came to help him. Yeah. And I also think if this monkey was in it, um, he might help the monkey pick bananas. Oh, you think so? Yeah. And essentially, oh, I don't think I showed it yesterday. We went ahead and did the journaling prompt, and she wrote... Um, some things, some ways that she thought her animal would act or speak or things that she thought he would do based on um, the, his characteristics or his character traits. And so today we're going to be working on the brainstorming. We have this brainstorming sheet. We're going to brainstorm on a marker board and then she's going to take the ideas she likes and add them to her uh, brainstorming sheet. So... It really just walks you right through it. So that is what we're gonna do. All right, we are on activity set five today, which is basically writing the fable. Um, they call this the sloppy copy. It's the rough draft. <laughs> <laughs> so I went through um, kind of what her fable needed to contain. We talked about this. 
she had her um, character sheet that we did earlier in the week and her um, brainstorming sheet that we did earlier during the week and um, we went through all of that and then she um, worked on her fable there and that's it for today. She worked on that and then the next um, we will work on editing and right, revising. We are on activity set six which is the um, editing and you kind of guide your student in self-editing his work, his or her work, um, and they've got kind of directions here. They suggest making a set it, reddit, edit bag, which we kind of did. We just had this pencil pouch hanging around, so we collected. Um, they tell what to put in it earlier in the teacher's manual, so we've got some highlighters, um, some little stickers, uh, there we put an eraser in there. There's some post-it notes. I don't think they asked for those. There's some um, whiteout. Uh, there's a red pen and then just some um, different colored pens. I think it said colored pencils, but we didn't have any um, that we could set aside. So anyway, so we have that, and it kind of guides you through guiding your child through the editing process. So that is what we are going to do. There is a, um, they'll use this um, fold and go thing during the editing. And then there's also somewhere there's an editing checklist. Where is it? There it is. So we'll use that as well. Okay. Keep reading. Then four days later, the drought came and the animals were suffering. But then Tiger told them, don't worry, I have a secret stash. All right, so we worked together to edit her paper. We kind of went through it and she self-edited in one color. And then I went through and edited. And then we rewrote and she wanted to... Um, do her final one in a little book so that eventually when she does all the writing assignments, she can have a whole little library. So that's what she did. Um, so she went through and she did a really good job of writing and illustrating her little fable. So um, I think she really, really enjoyed it. And um, it was more kind of time intensive of my time than I'm, I don't know, than I would probably normally do. There was a lot of, I don't know, it, it was just, it was more than what we normally do. However, I think she got a lot more out of it than out of some other things that we have done. So I'm pretty pleased with it and um, I think we will continue to use it. Most of all, she really enjoyed it and um, I think she had a great time with it. So anyway, hopefully um, you can gather some information from all of this stuff that I put together. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our take on it after one lesson. So if you have any questions, let me know.